Greetings everyone. I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. In Turn to God with Karen, my message for listeners is to encourage overcoming as we face unwanted life circumstances. We can always turn to God whenever we're brokenhearted, overwhelmed, and when we're filled with gratitude. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, King of the universe, because your loving kindness is better than life, our lips shall praise you. You are our strength and our refuge. We are filled with gratitude and humility at the miracles that you've worked in our lives. We cast our cares on you. We fear no evil since you are always with us. We pray faithfully and we strive to obey you consistently. So as we submit to you, Lord, we believe that you answer all our petitions in your perfect will and your timing. We ask that you save, heal, and protect our loved ones, our friends, and even our acquaintances because we know that there is no petition too great for you to handle. With God, all things are possible. Please forgive us of all our sins as we forgive those who offended us or done evil towards us. Thank you for your unconditional love, your compassion, and your mercy. Your grace comes through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. My hope is that you will turn to God continually throughout your life. My 100th podcast was on July 30th, and with that, I took a trip down memory lane, and it included a brief personal testimony. If you missed it, I invite you to go back to it, Turn to God with Karen, and, and the title is Answer the Call. Today's topic is entitled Overwhelmed. The definition includes buried or drowned beneath a huge mass, submerged. And no, I'm not talking about my waterfall podcast that was last week. Giving too much of a thing, such as your time, to something or someone. Mm. I have a strong emotional, having a strong emotional effect. To be overpowered or overcome. Overwhelmed. For this topic, we're talking about being overwhelmed because we've taken on too much on ourselves. Tasks, projects. So much so that we're noticing a balance is shifting from our career, health, exercise, quality time, family, fun, and time in the Word, our spiritual component. We know that each area is important and there will be consequences when our lives remain out of balance. Something's going to give, something's going to suffer. I thought of this about this topic for today because periodically I find that I need to reevaluate to bring my own life back into balance. Recently, I volunteered to work on two projects while my schedule did not allow for the time that it would take. It was after volunteering that I once and once I figured it out that these projects will really take more time than I planned on. Has that ever happened to you? So what are some of the options we have? The popular thing today would be to simply renege on what you, you agreed to do, giving a valid reason or an excuse. That's fine, right? What about the people who are counting on us? Can we work? Can our work be done even without us? Or will it be dropped? And do we care? Where does our accountability go? How do we feel when someone promises us that they're going to do something and then they fail us? It hurts. It hurts at some level. Maybe not emotionally, but something that was supposed to happen is not going to happen now. And we know that we should be practicing the golden rule to do unto others as we would have them to do unto us. Mm. We would be more up to stand with our promises and be in, have integrity if we thought about that. As a side note or a part B to this option, 
Are there some tasks or projects that can be delayed for a short time? That might be helpful. And if it works for all parties involved. Number two, have we examined every task, project that we're doing to see if we should really be in it? If it's taking away from fulfilling your God-given purpose, your calling in life, then maybe you should reevaluate. For example, if you're a believer, a follower of Jesus, which I hope you are, you can ask yourself, does this agree with the Great Commission? Does it coincide with, go ye therefore, and go out and share with others the gospel of Jesus, the good news? Or are these projects in some way geared to help those in need? Remember, Jesus encouraged us to help our neighbors, those in need, when, when he told the parable of the Good Samaritan. Does your project reflect what you visualize Jesus doing? That goes to the adage, what would Jesus do? We can think about, what would Jesus do in this situation? There's many options that we could consider, but I'm eager to jump to the best, save for the last of all our reasons. In a way, this was a test. This is what we do sometimes, don't we? What is the first thing that we should always do, especially if we're anxious and worried? We go to the Lord in prayer. We cast our cares and our burdens on Him. Our Creator knows better than we do ourselves or anyone else who might try to advise us. God knows what plans He had for us and what He wants us to do. He knew that from before we were in the womb. Jesus knows our purpose, our calling. We can ask Him to show us what that is. We can ask Him to open doors to opportunities and we can close doors, ask Him to close doors that are not leading to our purpose, His plans, His will in our lives. It may be that you're supposed to do every task, every project before you that you've agreed, that you've agreed to do. Each of them may relate to your purpose. Still, we can cast our cares and our stresses and our worries and proceed, doing the very best job that we can do, praying continually for God's guidance and His direction. When we know that we're doing what is God's will, we find joy and peace about it, and we're well equipped to do it. Well, that's where I found myself. I found that, yes, I am supposed to do both of these projects. They do go along with my calling, my purpose, and I know uh, that God can cause me to be able to do it because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God has spoken to me using several channels regarding my present overwhelming, including a sermon from Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer is a charismatic Christian author and speaker and president of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Here in some of my messages from her, we are to use our time purposefully with wisdom to know and do God's will, to redeem the time. We can ask God for wisdom in what we spend our life doing and make the most of every opportunity. As a stark example, we have the story of Samson, as in Samson and Delilah, and that's found in Judges chapter 16, I think. Samson was very strong, but when he stopped doing what God had asked him to do, he became weak. Obedience is the key. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, we learn that God's power is ours if we ask. We have the power through Jesus. We can accomplish what we mean to do in life. I especially love this verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I also gleaned much from a recent sermon at Hope Point Church in Chesterfield. 
and that was by Pastor Amy Stells. As part of her message, it included passages from Haggai, H-A-G-G-A-I. Did you realize that that book only has two chapters in it? There's much to learn in those two chapters, so I hope that you will read it. What I received is this. We can't do the work on our own. We need to ask Jesus to be with us every step of the way. Philippians 1.6 Be confident of this very thing, that he which hath done a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And Jesus wants to help us. We should consider whether our choices reflect faith or fear. With God working with us, we're well able to do the work, if and when it is in God's will. Hebrews 3, 4, For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. As we pray continually, we can press on. We can keeping on and reaching higher levels with each step. This is one of my favorite scriptures that I use as affirmation. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And verse 14. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I hope you enjoyed my podcast today. This is Karen Lacey doing business as Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday at 6.30, Monday morning at 6.30, and Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7. Both are Eastern Standard Time. You can download to listen anytime. And both of these podcasts are with Storm Talk 365 Radio and iHeartRadio. We're also available at iTunes, Alexa, Twitter, and um, I'm going to give you some ways that you can contact me as well. My website, www.karenjanecasey.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. You can also go to the website www.stormtalk365radio.com. My Facebook fan pages, which match my podcast, Turn to God with Karen and Abundant Living with Karen. I have an author page at Amazon.com. A shortcut to that is this, www.goo.gl slash capital P, T as in Tom, capital C as in cat, N, capital G, 3. I strive to educate and to encourage people to conquer life's challenges, and I do this because I'm a survivor of domestic violence. And as I recovered, my gratitude motivated me to write books and to do podcasts so that others can gain tools for overcoming and fighting their demons. Defeat what's holding them from having an enjoyable life, an abundant life. My Dear Rosa Jean is at createspace.com slash 503-5828. Mystery at Candace Bay, a shortcut for it is goo.gl slash the number 2, C as in cat, 6, T as in Tom, capital E, M. Actually, all my books are on Amazon.com, Kindle, CreateSpace, Barnes & Noble Nook. This is my email, and I hope that you contact me with your suggestions, your feedback. I love to hear from you. Karen Jane Casey at gmail.com. C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Thank you and God bless.